<laughs> What's up, guys? This is Heiss, and once again, we're stealing a little bit of a Tom Scott idea. I know, it's uh, become the kind of the, the thing to do on the channel, but it's fun, and we've had fun with it. Today, we're playing Citation Needed, which is going to be me going through a story from Railroad history and making the gents guess about it, and if they guess correctly, they get a point, and they don't get a ding, but they get a soapstone tally on the welding table because we're low budget. Uh, and we're almost out of limes. And we're almost out of limes. It's very true. And the special prize for particularly bad answers is really mystery citrus, citrus, which is really <laughs> mystery the amount of city and uh, city citrus. We should have brought more citrus to throw at each other because I guess we've just we've just been throwing citrus at each other tonight. Next time we'll bring more limes. <clears throat> Assuming we do this next time. Assume, assume. Watch the videos. Yeah, watch the videos. Watch the videos. If this is funny, make, make sure you help the YouTube algorithm out so that they actually get seen and then uh, tell and us. we'll be spurred on to do more. And tell us if you like it in the comments. Tell us to do more of them. Like, subscribe, click the little bell icon to get notified. Ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, baby. I didn't even do it. I didn't even do it. You can't accuse me of being a solid YouTuber. Click, Thank click, you, Click Layton. the ding-ding. Anyways, click the ding-ding. Appreciate to Eric. I'm Mark Huber, you know me better as Heiss on the channel, and today I am joined with, he's still Doug Dimodome, Leighton Moreland. Hey guys. You know he likes sheep, it's Brett Weevold! <laughs> <laughs> and together we're three quarters of one idiot. Maybe he's half tonight, we don't know. <laughs> Are you my daddy? <laughs> Who's your daddy? And we're in constant search of a fourth idiot to join us to become one whole idiot, which, I mean, we really need. And once again, we're joined by, he's got poofy hair, Eric Roche. Eric! Eric! Got some soapstone. Did you How's just it? lick the soapstone? Bold of you to lick something that's been on this table. Ugh, would not <laughs> recommend. Did it taste like soap, or did it taste like train, or did it taste like weld, or did it taste like... Tastes like train that's been washed. Like the thing from SpongeBob, you throw it at 50% soap, 50% stone. stone. Yeah. <laughs> Would not. 99% right. <laughs> hot gas. <laughs> the name of the game is Citation Needed. As described, I'm going to tell a story through rewriting history, and these gents have to guess the details about it. Whoever gets the points right. <laughs> Sorry, I called you gents. These idiots have to guess the details, and whoever gets them right gets the points. History. So. Matter. The Wellington Disaster. Oh, that really narrows it down. <laughs> Seven! The Wellington Disaster. That really narrows it down. I thought that was like an alternate history name for the Battle of Waterloo. No. <laughs> I thought that was, you so, know, so, so frying doesn't, steak. Doesn't ring any bells right away? Nope. Other than steak? No. Okay, good, good. I was hoping it wouldn't, mm, but I was hoping it would. Because, the Wellington um, Disaster. It was notable for one thing. One one thing extremely notable for. Very tall rubber boots. No. Steam choo choo go kaboom. No. Well not steam that we choo -choo. not that we know of, but steam choo choo. Okay. Not that we know of. I, we don't know if it went kaboom. It probably I don't know. Hmm. So hang on, are we Wellington sounds very British. Are we uh, perhaps across the pond for this story? No. No. Oh. No. Oh. So I'll oh, give you a little bit of context. Okay. The Wellington disaster began starting in March 1st of 1910. It was an ongoing disaster. It was an ongoing disaster. It, it took a little bit of time for all of the events to unfold. Is it currently ongoing? No. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> it was a molasses train wreck. Everything <laughs> came off and it was a slow <laughs> motion. Some say it's still derailing. <laughs> this is a bit of an aside, but there was a moment when at the Colorado School of Mines, we had a substitute PE teacher freshman year because we mm -hmm. had PE in an engineering college. Yep. And she no, well, was she was the uh, JV volleyball team coach, okay. and she was just a piece of work, and we hated her guts. Right. And so she left us out to like, okay, finally we had a good day instead of making us run. I Lord. like to watch the children <laughs> run. <laughs> right. She, she made us play dodgeball. 
Okay. And we're all playing dodgeball or whatever. And Better than dodge rock? It, yes, true. <laughs> dodge wrench. But we all dodge thought rock. it would be hilarious at one point if we played in slow motion. <laughs> and so everyone, all these <laughs> engineer nerd kids, all committed in freshman year, were all like, <laughs> and dodging and being hit dramatically in slow motion. <laughs> and she came in to find us doing it, and she got pissed. Yeah, she threw the line, maybe just like this. <laughs> yeah, she got so mad. Anyways, where were we? It's a beautiful thing. During the early morning of March 1st, 1910, an avalanche roars down Windy Mountain near Stevens Pass. Does anyone know where Stevens Pass is? That Tennessee. sounds like it's in the northwest. Above Stevens. <laughs> Point to Layton, the northwest. Stevens Pass is, in fact, in the Northwest. Oh, sorry. sorry. March 1 was when the uh, culmination of the disaster was. Sorry. Oh. Uh -huh. the, uh, the beginning of the disaster begins on February 23rd, 1910. So there's a couple trains, and they're running on the Great Northern Railroad. The in, GOAT. The GOAT. <laughs> in Washington. And they have just gone through the old Stevens Pass tunnel to come to the town of Wellington. Now, what do you think is notable about the town of Wellington? Very little. Lumber. A lot of French loose. <laughs> point, point. <laughs> point to Brett, point to Eric. Eric! Not much is notable and lumber because it was Lumbertown and not much is notable because... But it wasn't Lumberton. No. Was it just a flag stop? Did they not stop there regularly? Mm -mm. It's actually a very important town for the railroad. Oh. But it's no longer notable. Servicing shops. Does it no longer exist? Coaling? Point to Brett. Does the story have to do with the town unexisting? Not exactly. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. I'm in danger! <laughs> it's February 23rd, 1910, in the Pacific Northwest. The Titanic is still a beautiful dream. <laughs> Unrelated! But yes, no points to you, sir. <laughs> The sky was blue, the earth was brown and green. <laughs> the Titanic was above water. There were trees. <laughs> lots of, there is, lots of there trees. There is a pair of trains, a pair of passenger trains, okay. that are trying to head westbound towards Seattle in Leavenworth, Washington. One of them is a following section? Uh, no, not a following section. One was the Spokane local. Train number 25, and the other was the fast mail train number 27. Well, we know this the... ends in disaster, and it's just too fitting that it's the, the fast mail, the wreck of the fast mail. Was it the Pacific fast mail? By, by some accounts. <laughs> we got him in the face! Yes! <laughs> and, he's, and he's got oh. the dot. You've got, you've got, you've got, the you've got, you've got no lime on you. Uh. Beautiful. So, these trains are trying to proceed westbound from Leavenworth onwards to Seattle. Okay. How did it go? What happened? Poorly. <laughs> we, we learned this the first time. <laughs> They've reached Wellington. They've reached Wellington. I'm Point. going to assume that Wellington is on Point the east bed. side of Stevens Pass. They have yet to go downhill. No. Oh, they're so they're going on the downhill. other side of Stevens Pass. Yes. But neither of you get... Yeah. Kay. We kind of solved it out for each other. They're but going yes, downhill. Wellington is on the west side of Stevens Pass. What is notable about the Stevens Pass rail alignment in this era? It is single Very track. Short. Correct. not what I'm going for, but point anyways. Are there switchbacks? No. Main line for the Great Northern. Did, didn't they bridges. have main line on the Great Northern or with switchbacks for like a brief period while they were building a tunnel? Not that I know of. Maybe. Not, 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 not in this time. Okay. Bridges? No. Well, there are some bridges, but what about the tunnel? Long tunnel. Long tunnel. <gasps> does, somebody get, the point. does somebody get gassed out in the tunnel? No. Nobody gets gassed out in the tunnel, but it's a very long tunnel. So, 1910, very long tunnel. What does that make happen? Uh, no communication. It means the... <laughs> Not what I'm going for. Engineer, the engineer pulls the throttle, prays to God, and drops to the floor. The fireman slugs the firebox and drops to the floor, and they pray they see tomorrow. No. Operationally, they knew that that would be the thing that would happen. So they did something very odd for the 1910s. They run masks? No, no. PPE? No. <laughs> that, that would be very odd. For the 1910s? But this is more odd in a electric sort of way. Oh, oh, they put on an electric helper. Yes. Oh. I very helped you. I get half of that point. Okay. But point to Layton. 
These trains were mixed trains of steam locomotives and electric locomotives because they had to have an electric locomotive to run through the Stevens Pass Tunnel. Because the tunnel was so long, despite its high elevation, that they couldn't run a steam engine up the tunnel without opening the fire door, causing any kind of draft problems or any kind of asphyxiating issue. So they had an electric helper that took the train through the tunnel to Wellington on the west side. And Wellington, being on the west side, just on the other side of the tunnel, is at a very important part of the railroad. There's a curve. There's a junction. With a dead man. There's a water tower. So there's a station master. Yes, but no. Yes, but no. Uh, We're talking yeah. about a mountain railroad. What's an important point on oh, it? Oh, it's a helper station? It's a mine? <laughs> I'm, I'm very bad at guiding this along. <laughs> What's important on a mountain railroad? Booze. There's a liquor store. Shape. Shape. It's at this place called The Summit. Oh. You said we're going downhill. I didn't say we we're going downhill. You so did. Well, he did say we're going up. It's on the tunnel. west side of the tunnel. I think oh, we, I, I took we the assumed, west side of the pass. We assumed this that the is, tunnel this is was the top, at the top. The of tunnel the pass. was. Yeah, okay. I see. Yeah. I was wondering why we needed an electric helper to go downhill through the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair <laughs> points. So the, the the consist of the two trains were made up of, and this is hilarious because they don't know five or six <laughs> steam and electric locomotives. 15 box cars, some passenger cars, and sleeper cars. The trains made it through the Cascade Tunnel, now known as the Stevens Pass Tunnel, from the east to the west side of the mountains. Now known as the Tunnel of No Return. <laughs> now, no, well. <laughs> Pass the point of no point return. Is a point for, for later. Oh, Preemptive no. point. Preemptive point. I'm in danger. They make it to Wellington. Why did they stop at Wellington? Everybody was dead. <laughs> That's not where the, not, we're not in disaster yet. We're in February and it's March when the disaster happens. Snowden. Point to Leighton. The trains made it through and avalanches forced them to stop at Wellington in King County. Wellington was a small town populated almost entirely by Great Northern employees. Railroad town, top of the railroad. It existed for the railroad. Yeah. That was that. Three Here bars per human. Got it. Three bars per human, yep. And woman. <laughs> so you gotta remember that Wellington is at the near top of the current US 2, Highway 2 peak over Stevens Pass. So it's not high for Colorado standards, but it's high for the Cascades. So high elevation, cold Northwest climate. What happens? Snow. Ice! Yes. <laughs> Points. Ice on the tracks. Points. Easy points. Tracks dead ahead. <laughs> yeah. And what happens when it gets cold and there's moisture in the air, children? <laughs> Snow? Breeze. Ice? Snow. Snow. Ice. Uh, rain. Sheep. 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 Poor, poorly. <laughs> poorly. <laughs> yes, correct. Sheep. Sheep. So, the train stops under the peak of Windy Mountain, above Tide Creek at Wellington. The heavy snowfall and avalanche has made it impossible for the train crews to even clear the right of way. They brought rotaries out and couldn't do crap. Like the rotaries would not wet, handle sticky snowman. Wet snow. sticky bits of tree because it's avalanche, right? Oh, so they yeah, can they can rocks get it. and trees and you don't hikers. you don't want to. So for six days the train waited throughout these conditions, blizzards all the time. The trains could not proceed down the mountain because the avalanche condition couldn't clear it. It's continuous blizzard. Six days. Six days. And on February 26, something unfortunate for the town happens. It's the town hit by an avalanche. Not yet. Oh boy. They ran out of booze. <laughs> they ran out of... That would be a bad time. <laughs> they ran out of coal. Plague. No. What's important that was recently, well, relatively recently established in the 1910s? Electricity. Communication. Point to Eric. The telegraph line, I think you already had one. The telegraph lines go out. They have no communication to the outside world <laughs> starting February 26th. <laughs> On the last day of February, the weather turned to rain with thunder and lightning. Well, it's melting the snow. Very, very frightening. <laughs> what? Mystery Sisters! <laughs> What does rain do to lots of hard packed snow and things? Slush. Oh, it turns ice. to ice. Turns to ice, turns to slush. 
What if it's like a lot of rain? Slash. Oh! Flash flood avalanche. Point what? to Leighton! For Fl- flash, flash flood avalanche. Flood avalanche. <laughs> So February 26th, the telegraph lines go out. The trains are still stuck at Wellington on the top of the railroad. Six days later. Six days later. Oh, six on days March later. 1st, two oh. more days later, after rains had been coming down, thunderstorms, lightning, sometime after midnight, we have the account from Charles Andrews, who's a great northern employee. He was walking through the town of Wellington when he heard something. What did he hear? The bars let out. An avalanche. Screaming! Points to Eric. He heard a rumble that became an avalanche. He turned toward the sound and there was an interview with him in 1960 Ooh. where he gave his account. So at least he survives the avalanche. At least he does, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the head Physically. of the count, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when asked, he said what he saw was white death moving down the mountainside above the trains relentlessly advanced, exploding, roaring, rumbling, grinding, snapping, a crescendo of sound that might have been the crashing of 10,000 freight trains. It descended to the ledge where the side, side, side tracks or sidings lay, picked up the cars and equipment as though they were so many snow-draped toys, and swallowing them up, disappeared like a white, broad monster into the ravine below. Sounds like me getting out of bed in the morning. It's a lot of adjectives. It yeah. is. This, this, this just this avalanche just come down. Yes. Has it hit like freight cars and stuff sitting there? I was picturing like box cars, or has this hit the passenger trains, presumably loaded with sleeping people? I ask the questions here. No. Oh. Pick. Sleeping people. Sleep. Eric. Point. <laughs> oh dear. The avalanche comes and it hits both the trains, and the reason they don't know if it was five or six locomotives is because the locomotives became bye-bye. They disappeared. And why we don't know if they blew up, they were buried. You don't know if they blew up before or after, or if the snow did what the snow did. Snow person. One of the 23 survivors interviewed three days after the disaster stated, there was an electric storm raging at the time of the avalanche. Lightning flashes were vivid and a tearing wind was howling down the canyon. Suddenly there was a dull roar and the sleeping men and women felt the passenger coaches lifted and borne along. When the coaches reaches the steep declivity, they were rolled nearly 1,000 feet and buried under 40 feet of snow. Holy shit. Railroading, railroading in the winter. That noise. 23 yeah. out of how many? Yeah. A lot. Uh, 50? No, 500, sorry. Six pigs. Oh, we'll, probably. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's two trains, though. Yeah. yeah. It is two trains. One of them was a mail train, though, and the other was a local. Oh, that's true. It was said that the one of the surviving train conductors was sleeping in one of the mail cars, and he was thrown from the roof to the floor, to the roof, to the floor, several times over as the train rolled down the mountain. <laughs> I don't get paid enough for this. Oh, my, my head, my butt, my head, my butt. What's going on? Oh, so hundreds of people are dead. <laughs> so the, the town came to the pile of train that had then that was disappeared down below. Presumably yeah. then caught on fire. <laughs> There's a lot of snow it's under and water, 40 yeah. feet of snow. Oh. I don't yeah. know. Wooden train cars, they always catch on fire. <laughs> that is what they do. I dig out the survivors. Reports come out about tragedy, etc. Uh, Price is right rules. What was the count of victims? 100. 200. 260. None of you win. Oh god. Guess again. 50. I'm gonna go even higher, 500. Price is right rules means that it's oh, lower fine. than 100. <laughs> 45. 70. It was 96. Ooh. Just below, just below 100. Ooh. So we'll give Brett the point for that. It was known as the worst natural disaster in the state of Washington and one of the worst railroading incidents in history. Oh, God. So afterwards, they discovered the immediate cause of the avalanche was the rain and the thunder <laughs> conditions, right? I thought you were going to say that they discovered the immediate cause. Hmm. I don't know, Watson. It looks like it might be the work of Dr. Snow. (laughs) Yes, precisely. Snow, lots of snow. 
thunder, lightning, water, whatever. But there was another cause that they determined be a part of it. Another couple causes that helped make this worse than it needed to be. And we hit on one of them earlier. Had there been the communication, the other train wouldn't have arrived. Hmm. Uh, what did we touch on earlier? I'm struggling to remember now. <laughs> what was notable about Wellington? Two things. Lumber. He had a big nose. Lumber. They cut all the trees down off the mountain and that let the snow oh, come down. Oh, wow. the soil was loose. Oh, they yeah, cut all the trees down. They didn't cut all the trees down, but they cut enough trees down that there was no resistance for the soil anymore. stability, bitches. It all comes back to civil engineering. <laughs> it does. But there was another piece that is very, very relevant to us that went into it. Is it something to do with the heat of the locomotives? Something. What does that one do? Roll Sets over. Sets things on fire. <laughs> Point. Oh, forest, forest fires. Forest fires caused by the engines had cleared out oh, the, the rest remaining of trees. The, the trees. Uh, and that had allowed for the, so many avalanches to come and hit anyways. But being at the summit of the railroad, it's, right at where a tunnel it, was. Did it cause that avalanche? No. It did cause the avalanche that made the train stuck. Yes. <laughs> yes. So... It took the Great Northern three weeks to clear out the avalanches, the mess, the everything, and get the line back open. After the seven days or whatever, yeah, it that was, the, road, the road was already closed. It, it, was, it, was, seen... actually, it was closer to 20. 17 or 20. Oh, all said, like Whoa. February 23rd to March Ooh. 10th, I think. Oof. They must have had to spend stuff over the Milwaukee Road. Uh, I guess, the Milwaukee Road. <laughs> Bastards. So, does this rail alignment still exist? No. Yeah. Yes. Point. Doesn't. Oh. Why doesn't it still exist? Avalanches could take that. <laughs> Previous other avalanches have taken it out. Point <laughs> to Eric. They had yet another avalanche later in the teens that took out yet another train. And Ooh. it was a smaller scale disaster. It's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster. They should have left this part of the island alone. Yeah. So it turned out, it was 1916. Uh, eight passengers were killed when another avalanche, same mountain, same place, nailed a Great Northern passenger train and took Ugh. it down the mountain again. Wow. Not a great territory. Hence, no. the rail alignment doesn't exist. Even after the first disaster, they renamed the town. They said, it's no longer Wellington. Everyone knows this is the Wellington disaster. It's now Ty after the creek. <laughs> So, no. Ty, T-I-E? T-Y-E. Oh, okay. It no longer exists. It's fine. It's cool. That that washes oh, wow. away the horror. Yeah. You can still go to Wellington. There is still the footings of a water tower, and the original tunnel portals are still there. Cool. But uh, ever since 1929, a new tunnel has been in service. They built a much much longer tunnel. At a <laughs> because much, the first one wasn't long enough. enough. At a <laughs> much <laughs> at a yeah. much 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 lower elevation. Oh, um, and they had those really goofy big electric engines. Yes. That later went on to be Free. converted into UP coal turbines. Extra point for Leighton. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. I don't know that. Ah, it gets thrown off bridge. <laughs> so, uh, 1929, the now present day Stevens Pass Tunnel was built. And then it's still in service on the BNSF Railway. <laughs> on the BNSF Railway. And this tunnel is notable for... Oh, the Great Northern Railway. Not the Great Northern you Railway. You said BNSF again? I did, no, it is BNSF. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's oh, okay. it's BNSF. Day, BNSF. Oh, I thought you were talking about it, it was, was in service for Great a while. Northern then, and oh, now I see. it's BNSF. I see. Yep. My bad. But what is this tunnel notable for? Second longest tunnel in the U.S. Longest tunnel in the U.S. Point to Brett. It is the longest tunnel in the U.S. Longer than the Moffat. Longer yep. than Moffat. It's like 7.2 or 7.3 That's why I know miles. it's the longest, because it's longer than ours. It's that's longer than the absurd. Moffat. Yeah. The original tunnel, too high up on the mountains. They tried to do snowsheds. They tried to do stuff. Too much logging, too much whatever. Too much yet, death. Avalanche, train park, avalanche, train dead. 96 people dead. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so badly out of tune. We'll train you one of these times. But yeah, horrendously bad rail incident and one of the worst in the United States history. It's a lot of people. Wow. And I'm surprised you guys hadn't heard of it, but it is definitely up in my territory. And mm. I've been, I've been and seen the old water tower footings and, and the old tunnel portal. It's actually pretty cool. It's the Iron Goat Trail. You can go check it out on Highway 2 if you're ever up in Washington. Road it's a beautiful trip, road. Road trip. 
I don't know if it's a worthy destination. To the mountain of death! <laughs> yes! We shall go. Yeah, the, uh, the rest of the town has been gone for many moons because it was out of service in 1929. Hmm. As soon as they have the new tunnel, that was that. Hmm. And that's the end of the episode. Today, Brett wins! Woo! By a couple points followed by Leighton. It was a dead heat between you guys for last, so... <laughs> Anyways. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This has been so much fun to do. I hope you guys have enjoyed them. Make sure you let us know down in the comments if you have. Please do. Bye. 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 I'm Mark Huber. You know me better as Heiss on the channel. And today I am joined with, he's still Doug Dimodome, Leighton Moreland. Hey, guys. That was the best response I got. Are you just drowning in air trying to think of something for him? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the string back is definitely stale. Do we, do we want to restart that? No. No, it's just, this is just on the kind we of can cut, We can cut this perfectly. Right now we're in we're, editing limbo. We are in editing limbo. What happens? What happens is we all look like idiots to the people that pay me to be on YouTube. But isn't that what they pay you to be on YouTube for? Uh, yes. We're, we're, we're Schrodinger's uh, video. We're Schrodinger's uh, YouTube Are right we now. or are we not cut? We don't know right now. I'm still just trying to think of another stupid thing to say about Brett. You like sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Brett Weeble. He likes sheep. Oh, sheep! <laughs> <laughs>